Hey everyone, it's Mace1370. As you can see, I've joined a new guild. I'm in Veritas now. Today we are fighting Deviants, so I thought I would do a little Guild War video, just going over the three fights that I had. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, this first fight is against Exilqui. It's one of the, I think it was the mid-fort. Uh, the first two fights are forts, the last fight's a tower because one of the forts was totally knocked down. So for this first team, I decided just to be boring and take Dark Corvus and be safe. I didn't want to end on my very first fight with the new guild. I'll show you how I, do I paired uh, Decorv with a really high resistance A Momo, who's also fairly tanky, just to make sure that you know my whole team doesn't get silenced and completely controlled by the Broman. And the third slot here could probably have just been anyone. I picked ML Crow. My hope was to get the team immunity and then to be able to cycle his S3 uh, thanks to, you know, Broman proccing his extra attack. But ML Crow got silenced and I could have used S3 on Momo just to take it off of him. Probably should have just done that. Um, felt like it didn't really matter though. You can see the Broman and T-Cern are both going to go into the Dark Corvus here because he's dark and feed him his cooldown reduction. So he'll be able to S3 pretty early. All right, let's have some fun. You could try a little smarter. Guild Wars with Dark Corvus are always very exciting. Speaking of exciting, if you would also like to participate in exciting Guild War matches like this, Veritas is recruiting. So go ahead and drop a comment if you're interested. Uh, you can hit me up on Discord, which is uh, in the video description below. And I can uh, let you know how to apply. Alright, so Dark Corvus just did Dark Corvus things, and this fight is pretty much over. I feel like Guild Wars now has really come down to either just capitalizing on speed, you know, with a team like this trying to get a speed opener, and sometimes into either like Death Break or, you know, a bunch of CC type stuff and just lock you down, or it's really just trying to rely on RNG, you know, with units like Charles. People have such diverse kits now, it's really difficult to make a team, you know, that can stand up to everything. So if you can assemble two speed teams, that's probably going to be your best bet. Which you can see this person did here. Uh, Broman for round one and Cerise for round two. Um, I wasn't super concerned about the Cerise. I have Crow, Blue Crow here to tank the Charles. Uh, my priority is going to be getting Kron down. I don't want him, you know, double choking Ruel and one-shotting her. So I put defense buff up, and I could use my S3 on Spectre Tenebria here, but I don't want to get a random dual attack from the Charles, so I only S1 just to get the K-Run down a bit, and this also saves the stun on the Spectre Tenebria for k once his uh, immunity drops away. That way it'll just completely waste his passive and he'll just die right afterwards. I put a shield on Ruel because I know that Kron is going to use his S3. And Cerise might hypothetically go for the stun, or the stun on Ruel if she dropped low enough. Uh, she didn't, so Cerise used it on the Crow there. And now Charles double dunks the Crow. He just gets abused this entire match. I debate about resing Crow, but I figure, why bother, he's, you know, just going to get stripped by Charles, so I'll just let him take hits and then res him once he dies. So here the immunity is off of the Kron, so I'm going to throw out an S3 with the Spectre, just to stun him. This is where the fight could go wrong. If Charles was to S1, S2, my Spectre Tenebria there in response to the stun, you know, off of an Elber's proc, uh, I could have been in a lot of trouble, because then Spectre would have potentially died, and then Crow would have followed, you know, soon thereafter, and it would have been pretty awkward. I think given that the k would have been, for the most part, dead, I probably could have rezzed maybe Spectre and just tried to tank it out with Ruel and quickly kill off maybe the Cerise or something. So here we get to take care of the k -Ron. And that's a pretty squishy Charles, so he's likely high damage. The crowd abuse just continues. I was hoping to get a horse off with him, but apparently that's not going to happen. Will 
This Ruel, uh, Krau, Spectre, Tenebria comp is, I think, really strong for Guild Wars offense. If you don't have Spectre, Tenebria, another probably better option, maybe even, is Apocalypse Ravi. She fills in that slot really well. She does a lot of damage. She's a lot tankier than Spectre, so you don't have to worry about her just randomly dying to things. And she also has a res herself, so you have the res from Ruel and the res from Apoc Ravi. And that's a really safe offense into a lot of teams. Well, at least that time Crow didn't get stunned, but he didn't get his horse because Spectre just finished him off. Okay, so that was the first round. Alright, so here's my attack against Dalba. This was another one of the forts. I promise I won't use the same teams every single time. I almost Dark Corvus the bottom team, uh, but I decided I wanted to do something fun since I was recording. I did use this comp again for this one. I thought it would work really well just because the Falconer Clurry would go onto the Crow, and he did a clutch resist there, which was really nice. But even if he landed it, Crow would have been able to tank uh, the damage from the Charles, at least for one turn, until Ruel could either res him or bring uh, uh, cleanse him off of the rest two. And then Rylet will go into Ruel, but she's on Water's Origin, and she'll have defense buff from Crow, so she should be fine. Uh, so here I elected to soul burn my S1. I don't want to get randomly uh, Elbrist by the Charles. I also don't want to enable Spectre Tenebria's double attack, you know, where she attacks two targets, because then she hypothetically could give a bunch of stacks to Rylet, and that would be really awkward since if I activate him at the wrong time, he could either, you know, one-shot the Spectre or, you know, a low Crow or even Ruel or something. So instead I'm just going to leave him alone until Crow is into horse range and then I'll kill him. I thought that would kill Clurry for sure, but she lived with just a sliver of health. I could S2 the Ruel, but she has defense buff, and she's just going to get hit by a Ryle at S1, so she'll be totally fine. So I finish off the Ruel, or sorry, the Clurry with the Ruel. And now I'm just going to poke the Charles with Spectre. Um, I debate about using S3, but I think it's safer just to use S1 here. Uh, Crow can take one more hit from Charles before he'll... Uh, kill Rylet, you know, with a single horse. Will favor us. Ruel is a really great healer to pair with Crow because her heals are powerful and single target, so you don't have to worry about like the splash healing, healing Crow up and taking him out of horse range. Now so now you can see he's ready to finish off that Rylet. And I think Crow is a good answer to Rylet if you're having trouble dealing with him because the true damage from the horse. Uh, still does a lot of damage through a miss, so you're able to reliably take out even tanky Rylets with Crow. And I guess I didn't even have to go for the S3 there, I could have just kept playing it safe, but I didn't think it mattered, so I finished it off with the S3. Alright, for this one I'm using Akades, Adventure Ras, and Red Ravi. I brought Ras because he offers the dual attack on his S2, so I thought that would be a good way to deal with the Tempest Surin. She's really weak to units that can, you know, do multiple hits in a single turn. So things like Seaside Bologna, Adventure Ras, Lilia, stuff like that. I didn't want to bring SSB because the Alencia was here, and my SSB is not on a super super tanky build, so I was afraid of the SSB just, you know, dying to Alencia randomly. And having three fire units is kind of nice here since the only RGB unit the enemy team has is a green Alencia, so she'll be, she'll have a really hard time dealing damage to my team. Uh, now in terms of the kill priority, I think I just want to go for FCC first. That way I don't have to try and kill Alencia or t Cern through all of the shields and stuff. I use the skill 3 from Ravi here. Uh, just to get rid of the skill null and also hopefully stun some of the enemies, and I got a couple lucky stuns on both Alencia and Tisurin. So I'm in a really safe position right now. Kind of annoyingly, my Rast did get provoked. I wanted to start soul burning his S2 there just to finish off CC more quickly. All right, let's do this. Take this. Everyone. I like uh, Red Ravi for this fight because she's a fairly thick bruiser, so I don't have to worry about her randomly dying. And then she's the off element to Alencia, so that'll also offer additional damage mitigation. 
other than that, no particular reason why I brought her. I think any bruiser would have done just fine here. Alright, so CC's down. Uh, now I'm just going to kill Alencia. Could go for T-Cern, but I didn't think I would be able to kill her just in one Ras S2. And it would just put her into stealth, and then I have to wait for her to cycle around again, and that would be annoying. So instead, I'm just going to go for the Alencia first. Turns out the T-Cern is on Moonlight Dreamblade. Uh, but that S3 from Ravi is enough to trigger the stealth. So that'll soften her up a bit for the next turn when, you know, after I finish off Alencia. Oh, I guess I do go for the T-Cern here. Never mind. I think it was because I landed the stun on the Alencia there. I just decided to kill the T-Cern instead. I really like how they've made some of the specialty change heroes really strong. Adventurer Ras is one of the strongest heroes in the game right now, and everybody has access to him. Um, I feel like he's gotten progressively more and more meta as the uh, as time has gone on. So that was round two. Okay, so here's round three. I wanted to do something fun for this. Uh, this is Kai Air XD's tower. Whenever I see Arbiter Vildred, I always want to try and take Blood Moon Haste and my own Arbiter Vildred in together if I can, and I use Holiday Euphine whenever possible. So round one is pretty much the dream for me. Uh, the general plan with this is that the enemy Bissar goes first, Haste is on Idol's Cheer, and then he pushes up the Hofine. But it looks like most of my team just outsped his. I guess his Bissar is really slow. So it didn't really work out, but I did proc greater attack buff. So that's pretty much just as good, I guess. The opponent's RB procs greater attack buff and gets a turn. And almost kills my RB in response. But he lives thanks to the Blood Moon Haze shield. Uh, but this is a really fun comp to use because typically the Idol's Cheer on Haste will bump your Holiday Yuffie up. And then she'll be able to take her turn. She'll S3, wipe away Vassar's debuffs, and CR push your entire team up. And then you know, giving you the opportunity to take first turn, so to speak. Uh, it didn't really work out that way that time. Uh, so here's round two. Whenever I see SSB, my new mission now is to take Last Rider, Crow, and Rowana into her. And I figured this would also be a good comp for Landy, because you have all the buffs from, you know, like the skill null on the CC shield, or and the CC shields, I'm sorry, uh, to the buffs from Charles, you know, his attack buff and defense buff, to ramp up her skill three. And my Rowana gets a clutch counterattack in here so that my Landy will actually be able to do damage rather than just removing all of the skill nulls. Last Rider Crow, when paired with Rowana, is such a strong counter to SSB, you could probably just bring only these two heroes and be totally fine here. But I figured it would be a fun way to use Landy. I think I'm just debating about whether or not whether or not I want to S3 and I just decide to yellow it. Free you from I thought this could be fun. Now I'm getting ML Crow is great here because he puts up immunity and he prevents SSB from putting heal block and buff block on your team with her S3, which is kind of the only way that this type of thing can go wrong. Because if either those don't land or you have immunity or they get cleansed, uh, Rowana just completely you know, prevents SSB from doing anything to you. Got an unfortunate Elbrus proc there from the Charles, but luckily he does not strip my Landy. And I usually have Crow on Portrait, but I think I brought him on Adamant Shield here just to provide a little bit of damage mitigation since um, I knew I would have more than enough damage to get the job done. And now it's just a matter of finishing off the CC. You can see that Landy already has her S3 again. She hasn't really got to ramp up her attack yet though, so it doesn't do as much damage as it could do. I remember when this FCC SSB Charles comp was just the complete bane of my existence, but so many heroes have come out now it's not nearly as big of a deal anymore. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and remember Veritas is recruiting, so if you're interested, please make a comment below. Have a good one. Later.